The next part that we're going to talk about in regards to polynomial functions is called their end behavior. With end behavior, think about your arms. What's happening on your arms at the very ends? We don't care what's happening in the middle. We only care what's happening on the ends or our arms for the end behavior. So if A, remember A is your leading coefficient. If A is positive, the graph opens up just like with our quadratics. When A was positive, we opened up like a cup, our happy little faces were smiling. Here, if A is positive and the graph opens up, the graph rises to both the left and right. This is what our quadratics did, because remember, if it was up like a cup, it went like this. And then notice that we're going up on both sides. So we are rising on both sides. If A, our negative leading coefficient, then our graph opens down like a frown. And that means that the graph falls to both the left and right. And this happened with our quadratic because if our leading coefficient was negative, down like a frown. And notice that since it's pointing down on both sides, we're falling to the left and falling to the right. With even degree polynomials, I want you to remember that your arms go the same way. We don't care what's happening in the middle, but our arms have to go the same way. If one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. Now let's talk about our odd degree polynomials. If our leading coefficient A is positive, the graph is going to rise to the right and fall to the left. It's going to look something like this. It rises to the right and falls to the left. We don't care what's happening in between, but we rise to the right, fall to the left. If A is negative, the graph will fall to the right and rise to the left which means that it will look something like this. Rise left, fall right, who knows what's happening in between. Okay. With our odd degree polynomials, the arms are the opposite. Odd means opposite. You have to be odd to disco arms going in disco pattern, okay? The other thing to remember is that your leading coefficient A tells what happens on the right, how you end, okay? So whenever A was positive, the right side over here went up when A was positive on our odd degree, still went up. When A was negative for our even degree, the right side went down. 
when A was negative on our odd degree, the right side went down. And then you can always find out what the other side is doing by either arms the same or odd arms opposite. All of this together is called the leading coefficient test. Let's put it all together and do an example. Okay. Example number two says determine the end behavior in words of the following functions. To do this, first thing I'm going to want you to do is identify if we have standard form or factored form polynomials. Here, because we do not see any parentheses, we have standard form. We have standard form. It's in descending order, so our highest is first. We're going to look here. First, find your degree. Our degree is our highest because we're in standard form, so that's six. And then you need to ask yourself, is that even or odd? Six divisible by two is even. And since it is even degree, we know our arms are the same. After we determine if our degree is even or odd, we look at our leading coefficient. Here, our leading coefficient is negative 25, which we just said is negative, which means that the right side goes down. If it was positive, the right side would go up. So from here, we can say that our right side goes down. Since it's even, the arms are the same, which means the left better go that way as well. And then in words for end behavior, we fall to the left, we fall to the right. Or you could say falls to both left and right. Let's try another one. Here we have factored form because of the parentheses. So we need to find our degree. Our degree is the sum of all of our exponents. There's not an X on the 18, so we don't need to worry about them for our degree. We would have seven plus eight plus two, which is 17. 17, we need to figure out if it's even or odd. Since it's not easily divided by two, it doesn't give us a nice whole number, it is odd. If it is odd, that means that our arms are opposite. Odd, opposite, O's go together. Now we need to find our leading coefficient. And since the X's all have a one in the parentheses as their coefficients, we really only care about this 18. And for our leading coefficient, we only care if it's positive or negative. Here, it's positive. And if it is positive, that means that the right side goes up. Positive is happy. Which means on the right side, I can draw my little diagram. It goes up since my arms are opposite. Left side goes down. So here we would have that we fall left. And then we rise right. We read from left to right, which is why I started with the 
fall left. Our next one is in standard form because it's no parentheses, which means that we need our highest exponent. And notice here we are not in descending order. Our highest exponent is hanging out in the very, very end of the polynomial. It's a 19, so our degree is 19 which is odd. Remember, if we have an odd, that means our arms are opposite. We need to look at our leading coefficient. Our leading coefficient is not 11. I know that a lot of people like to look at the very beginning and say, that's our leading coefficient. That's only if your polynomial is in descending order. Your leading coefficient is the number attached to the highest degree term. So what's attached to the x to the 19th is negative 20, which we just said was negative. And if it's negative, that means that the right side goes down or falls. If we draw the little diagram, we have the right side going down. Because our arms are opposite, that means the left side has to go up. Try drawing that again. There we go. And from there, we can say that we rise to the left. And then we fall the right. 